We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia for during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part, for as I can testify they voluntarily gave according to their means and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this not merely as we expected. They gave themselves first to the Lord and by the will, will of God to us so that we might urge Titus that um, as he had al already made a beginning so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of our love against the earnestness of others for you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sakes he though was rich yet I mean became poor so that he went hit, I mean by his poverty, you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it so that you your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of of their balance between your present abundance and their need. So, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a, a fair balance as it is written. The one who had much did not have too much and the one who had little did not have too little. This is a word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you very much, Lisa. Please pray with me. Holy God, as we have come before your word, as we have come before your scriptures, as we read them and as we hear them, may we allow your Holy Spirit to read us to look inside the nooks and the crannies of our hearts and to give us a word of life as well. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We're going to put a photo up on the screen so that those in person are able to see it, and those online, you should be able to see it too. This is a photo that went around the internet a few years ago. It kept making its way about a football player that is an English footballer, a soccer player to those of us in America. This forward from Liverpool 
You may see the Liverpool insignia up on the left side of his chest. This forward from Liverpool uh, is also from Senegal, and his name is Sadio Maine. At the time of this photo being taken, he was making 11 and a half million euros a year. 11 and a half million euros a year. And he stunned the world with this photo. This photo of him walking into the back areas before the match, getting prepared. Now to you and I, we may not have noticed too much, except he's walking there with something under his arm, he's got his tracksuit on, you know, he's getting prepped and he's got his phone in his hand. But it was this phone that stuck out to people. Because if we were able to zoom in and see it fully, not pixelated, but as clearly as it is there, we would be able to see that this iPhone was a special iPhone. When you took a look at it, it looked like a truck had run over it. <laughs> This footballer from Liverpool was walking around with not just a little cracked phone, but with a cracked iPhone screen that would make all of us laugh. At eleven and a half million dollars a year, he was walking around with an iPhone 11, which was, in these standards, an old phone, and a cracked phone. And when people asked him, why don't you just get a new phone? You could have 15 new iPhones here before the game starts. Why don't you get a new phone? He said, why would I want 10 new Ferraris or 20 diamond watches or two jet planes? What would that do for the world? I starved, I worked in the fields, I played barefoot, and I didn't go to school. Now I can help people. What kind of help does he do? This is what he says. I prefer to build schools and give poor people food or clothing. I built schools and a stadium. I give 70 euros a month to a very poor Senegalese region in order to contribute to the local economy. Actually, edit there. It's not 70 euros to the region, it's 70 euros to every person in the region every month. Every person, every month, 70 euros each. I do not need to display my luxury cars, luxury homes, trips, and even planes. I prefer that my people receive just a little of what life has given me. Hear these words from the Apostle Paul again. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am by mentioning the eagerness of others, testing the genuineness of your love. For, for you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I'm giving my opinion. It is beneficial for you to begin, for you who began last year not only to, to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by your completing it according to your means. For the, if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. For I do not mean that there should be relief for others and hardship for you, but it is a question of equality between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may also supply your need, in order that there may be equality as it is written. The one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. 
The Apostle Paul shares a story before this passage, but it's not a story about a rich soccer player that plays for Liverpool. It's actually on the other end of the spectrum. It's about some churches in the area of Macedonia who had a collection, even when they were going through hardships. And the Apostle Paul says that they were still able to give even in their extreme poverty, overflowing in a wealth of generosity, all out of this abundant joy. Who gives like that? <laughs> Can we just be honest for a second? Who gives like that? Who gives out of their abundant joy even when things are tight? Maybe that's you, maybe that's not you. Maybe you're like me and you have difficulty with this passage, difficulty with this idea. I know that I sometimes, maybe more often than I like to admit, I identify less with the Macedonian churches and more with another pastor named the Reverend Nadia Boltz Weber. When someone asked her, Nadia, why do you love Jesus so much? Without even thinking, she responded, like Jesus so much? I don't know if I like Jesus all the time because Jesus makes me love the people I don't want to like and makes me give away more money than I want to give away. Sometimes I identify more with Nadia. But these Christians in Macedonia, they're able to do it, and they're able to do it with joy. And here's the kicker that both Nadia knows, and the Apostle Paul knows, and the Macedonian churches know, and I think you and I know if we pause long enough to let our soul speak it out. It's that we can give but we know that we can't outgive God. <laughs> we can't outgive that gift that God has given to us. Not only the gift of Jesus, but the gifts that we have each and every day. If we look to Christ and to Christ's life, an example to what he gave, to how he was bestowed with power and might and yet chose to be poor, for our sakes, then we can see that our gifts, even if we had the pocketbook or the generosity of Saudi Omain playing for Liverpool, we still wouldn't be able to outgive God. It helps us pause and to remember that everything we have, everything that we have accrued, everything that we've been given initially is a gift from God. All of it is a gift, first and foremost, from God, and we are invited to respond, to respond to this gift of love and to the possessions and the salaries and the finances we've been given so that God's joy may be found throughout the world just a little bit more. Joyful responding may not be our first step. <laughs> it may not be our second step or our third step or our fourth either. But joyfully responding, as the Macedonian churches are said to have done, may not come within the initial steps, but like Nadia said, it may be frustrating at first. But over time, over a cultivation of the Holy Spirit at work inside of us, which really just means allowing ourselves to open ourselves up to God and allowing that Holy Spirit to come in, allowing that Holy Spirit to come into our hearts, allowing that Holy Spirit to come into our dreams, allowing that Holy Spirit to come in even to our finances, allowing the Holy Spirit to do its work inside of us. And maybe we can catch a glimpse of what the Macedonian churches had. That even in extreme difficulty, even still they could give and give joyfully, abundantly, surprisingly, more than enough so that the church overall could fulfill its mission to the world. A mission that includes taking care of the poor, making sure that the outsider and the insider have enough, spreading the love of God to those who know and those who don't know. Shifting the, the very fabric of our communities to be more rooted in the love of Christ so that the love of Christ is in us 
cultivated by the Holy Spirit, transforming us so that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus anywhere. Here at our two churches between Princeton UMC and Kingston UMC, we know that giving looks different for all of us. That for some of us, we may be able to or may have already participated in regular giving or tithing, as it's sometimes called, or even pledging, where we say at the beginning of the year that we're going to give X amount of dollars over the following year. But maybe we're not able to do that, or maybe we haven't done that in the past. Maybe we're a little closer to what we saw with the children today. Maybe we're at a point in our lives where we need to look around and be a little creative with our giving. But all of us are invited into this. Here's what the Apostle Paul says again. It is beneficial for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now, Finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. Friends, if we were to zoom out of our lives and not just be thinking about 2023, not just thinking about October and the changing weather and what's going to happen this fall, or this winter, but if we were to zoom out over the last two, three, five, ten, twenty, thirty years even, and see the arc of how the Holy Spirit has been moving inside of us, maybe, as the Apostle Paul talks about, maybe there was a desire a year ago for something, but maybe that desire we can even see five years ago or ten years ago. Sometimes we get too narrow in understanding where God may be working in our lives, and when we zoom out, we're able to see that the Spirit has been moving the whole time. Maybe the Holy Spirit has been trying to cultivate some Christ-likeness inside of you as well. Even when it comes to our finances. Maybe you can remember the first time you gave to a church. Maybe it was as a child and it was with a quarter or a nickel or a dollar. Maybe you can remember the first time you gave to this church. Maybe, maybe you can remember the first time that you pledged. I know for me, that was a big thing coming out of high school and knowing, oh, this is what adults do. Wow, this is a new thing. Maybe, maybe you can remember the first time that you looked at your paycheck or your budget and started to see your finances, not just as your own, but as a gift that God has given you to bless others. And maybe... Maybe this year is the year you take a step forward in giving. And maybe like Nadia and sometimes me, it's not as joyful at the start. But there's something there that you believe in. Do you believe in the mission of the church? Maybe, maybe you can see how God's work inside of you is tugging you along to transform you from the inside out, to transform your finances from the inside out, to participate in God's mission here in central New Jersey. Sketch, sketch, come on. I may have some finances, but I don't have anything near to what that footballer, that soccer player had. Neither do I. So let me leave you with this story. It's a story of a professor uh, that I knew when I was an undergrad who had gone down to Kolkata to the home for the dying destitutes the Mother Teresa ran. And while there, these, these people that are able to come um, to this place are people that are in their last days and don't have anyone to care for them. So Mother Teresa and others were caring for them. So he got there and was able to see the people that he was assigned to. And one of the people that he was assigned to was on a mat and was not able to move much. So this professor spent time feeding him, giving little spoonfuls of rice and curry and fish into his mouth. And he noticed that uh, after a bit of time, there was, um, there was some agitation from the person that he was feeding. 
trying to push away the food, a little bit of coughing, and it took a second, but then he noticed that there was a fishbone that was stuck in his throat. And after trying to communicate that with the person that he was going to go in for it, he was able to remove the fishbone and allow him to find some relief. After that, the person didn't really want to eat too much more, unsurprisingly. But dessert that night was half a tangerine. So the professor pulled it out and started picking apart the pieces and showing it to the person and motioning, would you like it? The person joyfully accepted it. Piece by piece, just a little tangerine. <clears throat> And as he was finishing up with the final pieces of the tangerine, he noticed out of the corner of his eye someone was waving at him, and he looked down to see someone else on another mat who saw what happened. And he was trying to mention that I've got half a tangerine too. So the professor went over, accepted the tangerine, and was able to feed this person again just a little bit more. He says, if a dying man can offer a few section of, sections of fruit to relieve the suffering of another dying man, then I will always have something to give. We, each of us, each of us has something to give. So friends, open your hearts, open your dreams, open your finances to God. And in time, by following God's example, we may just be able to join with the professor in saying, I'll always have something to give. May it be so. Amen.